And the first one is people over process. And, you know, I had to remind myself of this, Liam, because um, I was getting into the mode of really just trying to pull myself out of the business and to put things on autopilot. In fact, I used to say that a lot to people and until I realized that it was a big fat lie that you can <laughs> put your entire business on autopilot and we'll see people market and sell that as a true idea when it's really false. You can't do that and be a successful business owner. You have to be able to keep in mind that any process, any automated tools, any things that you put on autopilot are also going to, they should be there to supplement you as a relationship builder and not take over your company. You should still be in your business. You should still be working with people and interacting with them on a personal level. Yeah, there's uh, all these trendy online tools uh, that we can try. And everyone wants to go out there and automate their business. Uh, yeah. But as we've kind of heard from a, a lot of uh, our exports in the past, it's, it's really about building personal relationships with people. And if you're automating everything and you're not um, complementing that or uh, adding the, the personal touch and actually being there as a person, I think you're, you're missing out on, on a ton of sales and the ability to uh, connect really and get to know uh, your prospects. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I had gotten to the place of really just kind of putting my social media, to give you an example, putting my social media completely on autopilot when it came to Twitter, for instance. And I saw as, as much as I had grown my audience to a point where I thought, wow, you know, this is a really good group of people. We're engaged and et cetera. When I did that autopilot thing, I started losing attention. And not only did I start losing, um, I started losing people, <laughs> followers, but I also lost connection, like real conversation. And that matters when you're creating a business right now. That's the thing that differentiates us and keeps us distinguished as a true professional is if we're really out there actively communicating and engaging. That's what social is supposed to be all about. And I think I've forgotten that. So yeah so when it comes to um you know systems and processes uh, and obviously we need to maybe outsource things or hire someone or you know maybe use some tools at some occasions mm -hmm. when are those occasions that we should maybe be looking to, to process things but we should all and and then what are the things that we should always keep um you know personalized that we should be always doing ourselves well, I think that's a great question. And so one of the other principles, and I'll bring this up because it's the very next one, is the three bucket rule that I talk about. And the idea is that you're going to separate things into things that you can act on directly, things that you can automate, and things that you can assign to other people. So when I think about the things that you want to act on and always be personally engaged with, one of the things that I would definitely put at the top of the list would be service. So um, I think there's always a great entry point when you're using things like chat bots, for instance, that's the new thing, the new hot thing. Um, there's a great way to have people enter into that service conversation with you, but you shouldn't leave them alone with the bot. You should be getting involved and having conversations so that you can better understand and define what's the real problem and how can I improve this? for that individual person, but also for the next time, for my entire system. And so I think there's nothing like having a true conversation with people that will help you to, to provide excellent service. Um, on the automation piece, I think it's anything that you are repetitively doing. So if there's something that you find yourself in your business doing over and over and over again, then those repetitive processes can really be done through some type of automated tool. And I would give you um, one of the things I think that, that I find is easy to automate would be scheduling. So if you're scheduling people through a calendaring system, you shouldn't have to do that on a manual basis. If you're giving people an opportunity to meet with you, say, for a discovery session. So many of you might be coaches or trainers or people that have that one-on-one -on -one upfront consultation. What you can do is create an automated system that allows people to connect and create that appointment that then syncs with your calendar so that it's always <laughs> going to give you that space and time that you need so you block it off when you know you're not going to need appointments and then you keep it open and available for those 
times when you know you can in, engage. So I think um, that's a great way to automate is using systems like that that are repetitive um, and that you need to get quick um, connection with, build quick connections. The assign piece as far as delegating to other people and outsourcing, you only want to assign or delegate to other people when it's a situation where your reputation and your relationship is not at, is not in peril. <laughs> so from a service aspect, for instance, um, I can go back to that example. No, you're not going to be available 24-7. And there are going to be some times when you can outsource certain types of questions. But when they get to be a little bit more complex, you need to get your hands dirty. You need to get in there and be the one who is saying, look, I'm going to guide you through this and I'll help you. Because a lot of times when people are hiring your company, they want to deal with you. So I, as a coach, would not outsource to someone else my coaching I would want to be the direct person who's facilitating and leading training and coaching, but not give that to my assistant to do because they're hiring me for that. I hope that helps to give a couple of examples.